are witnessing a GameCube renaissance, with so many incredible mods that have been released over the past couple of years, and many more yet still on the horizon. But there is one mod that I've personally been waiting for and am honored and privileged to be the first to show you. This is the M.2 loader from WebHDX for the Nintendo GameCube, a huge leap in our ability to store and load games using a modern M.2 SATA solid state drive while also leveraging the GameCube's other serial port. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today we'll be taking a first look at one of the most anticipated products for the Nintendo GameCube. This is the M.2 loader from the talented WebHDX. It allows you to connect a M.2 form factor SATA hard drive to the GameCube's SP1 port on the bottom of the system and load games right from it. It addresses quite a few issues that adapters like the SD to SP2 and the SD Gecko have exhibited, but I'll be getting into that a little bit later on in the video. Right now, I want to talk about what this product is, how it works, and how it came to be. So let's get right into it. Now, the first thing I need to mention about this particular unit is that it is a prototype. While this is a fully functioning prototype, it is by no means a finished product. The M.2 loader I have here actually uses what's called a Complex Programmable Logic Device, or CPLD. WebHDX originally designed the M.2 loader to utilize a CPLD chip, but due to the part shortage, these became significantly more expensive and a lot harder to get. So to keep costs down and ensure a reliable source of parts, WebHDX is actually in the process of completely redesigning the M.2 loader to utilize a RP2040 processor, the same that's found on a Raspberry Pi Pico. So what I have here just serves as a proof of concept and WebHDX is working hard on his redesign around the Raspberry Pi Pico. He's also working on improving other aspects of the design, such as the SP1 interface and the M2 screw mount. But regardless of those future changes, this prototype will effectively function similarly to the final retail version. And when it does finally officially release, I'll definitely be making a follow-up video on it, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that. Anyway, let's go ahead and take an up-close look at the M.2 loader itself. So for this device to work, you're actually going to need a couple things. First, you'll need a GameCube that has already been modified so that it can boot into Swiss. The M.2 loader actually pairs perfectly with another WebHDX mod that you may be familiar with, PicoBoot. This is a great Pico-based mod chip that allows you to load Swiss seamlessly. Of course, there are other ways to boot into Swiss, such as game-safe exploits, but mods like PicoBoot work extremely well and make booting into Swiss hassle-free once installed. This GameCube here is actually already modded with PicoBoot, so if you want to learn more about how to get PicoBoot into your GameCube, check out my video which covers everything you need to know about the mod and how to install it yourself. Anyway, now that we got our modded console squared away, you'll also need an SD to SP2 adapter with an SD card that has the latest version of Swiss on it. At the moment, Swiss cannot be loaded right off of the M.2 loader, but this will hopefully be something that is added in the future. So for now, we need to utilize a SD to SP2 or SD Gecko to get into Swiss. And the last thing you'll need to supply is of course a SSD. Now this is not to be confused with an NVMe drive. While this does look similar, it's actually a SATA SSD, but in an M.2 form factor. This is an important distinction, so definitely make sure you get the correct SSD as the adapter is incompatible with NVMe drives. Great, so now that I have everything in hand, let me show you just how easy it is to install this into the GameCube. First, we're gonna need to attach the SSD, which goes in at an angle and is then secured with a small screw. Then remove the serial port one cover and slot in the M2 loader. Replace the cover and then go ahead and install the SD to SB2 adapter, along with the micro SD card that has our files for Swiss. And that's it. 
One of the things I absolutely love about this kit is just how easy it is to get it up and running. Anyway, power on the GameCube, and let's see what this thing can do. So as soon as Swiss loads, you can see that it boots right into the M.2 loader, indicated by the icon on the left side of the screen, and we can immediately see all of our games. The games that are loaded on the SSD boot right up, and they work perfectly. This pretty much works as if we were loading games directly from the SD to SB2 or an SD Gecko. But with one key difference, and to understand that, we need to take a closer look at the M.2 loader itself. So one of the main benefits of using the M.2 loader is its ability to load games quicker than the SD to SB2 adapter and the SD Gecko. This is actually a really interesting point because the SP1, SP2, and the memory card ports all share the same bus, called the EXI. Now because of this, one would expect that all three ports exhibit the same data transfer speed. And this is what makes the M.2 loader so great. Both the SD to SB2 adapter and the SD Gecko are essentially dumb devices. They simply interface an SD card with their respective ports. The M.2 loader, on the other hand, as I explained earlier, utilizes a fancy integrated chip which enhances the data transfer speed between the SSD and the GameCube. In the case of this prototype, all the magic sauce lies in the CPLD, while the future variant will use a Raspberry Pi Pico chip. This in essence makes the M.2 loader a smart adapter, and therefore exhibits increased data throughput, improving not only load speed, but also game compatibility. While there hasn't been an exhaustive study as to how much better the M.2 loader is than the other conventional methods, there are certainly a few examples that showcase this improvement. For example, here's the intro video of Mario Party 5. This first example is coming from the SD to SB2 adapter. Let's take a look. You probably noticed some stuttering video and sound glitching, which occurs on many games when loaded from the SD to SB2 adapter. But now let's take a look at that same exact intro video, but coming from the M.2 loader. The playback is definitely flawless on the M.2 loader, and of course this is just one example. Now WebHDX did want to tell me that while there is improvement in game playback when compared to the SD to SB2 adapter as well as the SD Gecko, it won't have perfect compatibility with every game. Even the GC loader is incompatible with some titles. Obviously, more testing would need to be completed before we get the full picture of its capabilities and relative improvement over older adapters. Regardless, there's actually quite a few other benefits to the M.2 loader, which I'll discuss in just a moment, but first I'd like to go over a bit of background on this project. So about 10 years ago, an individual by the name of Danpro wanted to create a mod that would enable his GameCube to boot backups by modifying SD boot using electronics he had available to him, one of which was an IDE hard drive. This eventually resulted in the creation of the IDE EXI kit, which was a device that interfaced with the GameCube's memory card slot and allowed you to connect an IDE hard drive to load your games from. It has been reported that a few hundred of these kits were produced and sold, but has long since remained somewhat dormant for quite some time. Then, many years later, WebHDX came along and recognized the potential of the IDE EXI project and began working on what would become the M.2 loader. One of the things he wanted to change was the use of an IDE storage device to a more modern standard. So he decided to integrate an IDE to SATA conversion chip shown here, and also decided to utilize serial port 1 instead of the memory card slot. Using the SP1 gave him ample real estate to fit the M.2 loader, and it would remain hidden for a very clean installation. To optimize the performance of the M.2 loader, WebHDX collaborated closely with Extrems, who is the current maintainer of Swiss. And after many iterations, we got this the M.2 loader as it exists today. Support for the M.2 loader has been built seamlessly into Swiss, and even with this early prototype, it works extremely well. I'm super excited to see the final version once it's released. So while this project has come a long way, there is still plenty of work that WebHDX has to do to convert it over from using a CPLD chip to a Raspberry Pi Pico. All right, so now that we know a little bit about the M.2 loader and what it can do, Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the device. 
Starting with the pros, obviously the first is the increased performance and data throughput we get from the M.2 loader. This offers several benefits such as better playback of FMVs, reduced audio glitching, and in some cases better compatibility with games that previously had issues when loaded with an SD Gecko or SD to SB2 adapter. Another major benefit of the M.2 loader is the use of an SSD instead of a traditional micro SD card. This benefit is actually threefold. The first being its capacity. I've seen these M.2 SATA SSDs come in sizes up to two terabytes. I tried looking for a micro SD card of a comparable capacity and really couldn't find one. While looking on Amazon, there does appear to be some two terabyte SD cards, but not from reputable brands that I would trust. The highest capacity micro SD card that I could find from a reputable company is one from SanDisk and it's one terabyte. In addition to the larger storage capacity that comes with SSDs, they also seem to come in at a lower price point for comparable storage capacities. Of course, prices of these fluctuate all the time, but I was able to find this Western Digital 2TB SSD for about 135 bucks, and a 1TB SanDisk micro SD card for about 130. So while these are roughly the same price, you can get 2TB of storage with an SSD for the price of a 1TB micro SD card. And with a GameCube library at about 2TB, it's pretty great being able to have the option to purchase a SSD of that size and not need to worry about swapping drives. So really that's another cool thing about the M.2 loader using SSDs instead of micro SD cards. And the last really great benefit of using SSDs is that copying large ISO files to the SSD from your PC actually appears to be faster than an SD card, which is an interesting perk. While this is a small quality of life benefit, it will definitely save time when adding games to the drive. I'm using this no-name USB 3.0 adapter, and it works great. And of course, one of the very big benefits of the M.2 loader, much like the SD Gecko and SB to SB2 adapter, is that we get to keep the optical drive. This is one of the greatest benefits of using this method over an optical drive emulator like the GC loader. While I absolutely love the GC loader and the benefits that it brings to the table, not being able to keep the optical drive is one of the major drawbacks. So while the M.2 loader has some pretty major pros, there are a few cons, so let's get into those. The first con that I want to discuss, which really isn't that huge at all, is that while the M.2 loader itself is plug and play, it's really beneficial to use it in conjunction with a mod chip like PicoBoot, which does require some solder work. Of course, you can always use other methods like the save file exploit to boot into Swiss, but for the best experience, a mod chip is ideal. Again, this really isn't that big of a con in my opinion, but definitely something to consider. Another con is that even though the M.2 loader has better compatibility than a SD to SB2 adapter or an SD Gecko, it still isn't perfect. But really, there is no method with perfect compatibility. Not even the GC loader, which is an optical drive emulator. Compatibility improvements for the M.2 loader will most likely come from the Swiss end of things, which is currently maintained by Extrems, who has done so much for the GameCube modding community and continuously improves the platform to this day. So I suspect we will see continual improvements of gameplay compatibility as the M.2 loader and Swiss matures. Now something else that I don't really see as a con, but for some could be considered one, is that since the M.2 loader occupies the SP1 port, it means that you won't be able to install the broadband adapter. For me, this is a non-issue as most games that could utilize the accessory are no longer supported. And for the ones that can still use the accessory, I really don't play, but I thought I should mention it for the sake of completeness. Also, the device itself is super expensive and pretty rare. And the last con is that, at least at the moment, you still need to use an SD to SB2 adapter to boot into Swiss. It cannot be loaded directly from the M.2 loader, but this is something that will hopefully be updated once the final product is released. Anyway, to learn more about the M.2 loader, as well as other projects that WebHDX is working on, definitely follow him on Twitter and check out his GitHub page, both of which I have left links to in the video description below. So guys, there you have it. A very first up-close look at the M.2 loader from WebHDX. A really awesome project that further pushes the limits of GameCube Homebrew. Now, if you want to see more GameCube mod videos like this one, I have a whole playlist dedicated to the console that you can check out right here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next Thursday.